let's check in on the healthcare sector with more. Let's welcome in Hartaj Singh, senior, or I'm sorry, equity analyst at Oppenheimer. Hartaj, thanks so much for joining us. Great to have you here with us. Thank you, Caroline. Always a pleasure. So I want to talk about a few specific names with you, but before we get to those, let's talk about the overall sector because it's largely been out of favor this year outside of a few specific names that uh, mostly are linked to what weight loss treatment, right? But uh, just from a sector perspective, what's important for investors to consider right now? You know, Caroline, biotech's been kind of strange this year, but uh, this is a third year for drawdown. Um, I think people were hoping, um, you know, specialists uh, that have focused on this sector, um, you know, I would just empirically guess that's probably about 50% or maybe more folks who invest in this sector on, on average over time. And I think people were hoping for better performance, but especially in the last couple of months, you know, that really seems to have turned over. And essentially, you know, during this time, people have really sort of crowded into, um, you know, larger caps or even small to mid caps where they have a high degree of certainty, low risk, you know, something they can justify, you know, to their PM or their CIO, their investment committee. Uh, I've had, you know, clients tell me, look, I can only own one biotech, uh, you know, tell me which one you want, pitch me which one you want. These are more generalist investors. So I think it's been a strange investing environment in biotech this year with essentially a clustering into really, you know, a few names on the large cap side and then some specific ones on the small to mid cap size. Okay, one stock that they're not piling into, into is Moderna. Shares down about 60% year to date, 7% today. Uh, it, it fell to three year lows after earnings. What's the latest on Moderna, and would you be a buyer of this one? You know, Caroline, it's Moderna is sort of in that cusp of sort of, uh, you know, I think hopefully, uh, you know, transitioning what's from a COVID 19 vaccine story to, to a pipeline story. Uh, you know, that takes time. Um, I think that we were a little bit surprised. I mean, we have a perform rating or, you know, what's essentially a neutral on Moderna. And I think we were surprised at the third quarter call on the extent of the write downs they had to take on cost of goods sold. Um, you know, they had to essentially throw away vaccines because the mRNA vaccines don't sit on a shelf very well for more than three to six months. Um, and then secondly, you know, they, they gave initial guidance for 2024 where they, you know, gave a $4 billion number, which was half of what we were expecting. So we had to bring numbers down. So I think the, re the stock reacted really rationally. Is it time to jump in? You know, I don't know. I'm not trying to avoid the question. I will say that for the first time, I've had a lot of institutions, um, retail folks, uh, private wealth starting to contact me about this in a long time. Uh, people are doing the work. Uh, they're starting to understand what is the underlying COVID-19 business really worth, you know, assuming it's flat to slight growth going forward. Uh, and then, you know, and then starting to get, understand what pipeline catalysts are there. So I don't know whether this is the time to jump in, but I can definitely say that a lot of people are doing the work that uh, have not done the work before. Uh, and, and these would be fairly significant institutions and, and you know, folks in the retail and private wealth side. Okay, so still some question marks there. You don't have a price target on Moderna, right? Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't have to at Oppenheimer, and we choose not to because, you know, I think our neutral is sort of where we're at right now. All right, one stock that you do like and you do have a price target on is Vertex. I was just taking a look. It looks like you have a $410 price target on Vertex, trading at 385 right now. Tell us why you like this one and what gets it to 410. Yeah, Caroline, you know, you're highlighting Vertex. I will say, you know, also Gilead in general, and we've probably got the highest price targets on the street. Uh, maybe I'm an overly bullish biotech analyst. But starting with Vertex, look, you know, in biotech, what we like to tell investors that think of a diamond in front in your mind, right? Uh, the top and the bottom of the diamond and the right and the left of the diamond. And, you know, the top is sales growth greater than consensus. The bottom is earnings growth greater than consensus. And to the right is, you know, no competition in the future or little competition to the left is pipeline of that diamond. Vertex pretty much checks all the boxes of that diamond. You know, they have been hitting sales growth, you know, beat and raise expectations on earnings also. They've probably got a few more quarters slash one or two years ahead of on that, um, you know, both in the sales and the earnings side, they've managed their margins really well. 
um, you know, to the right side of that diamond future competition, most people agree that their cystic fibrosis franchise, the core, uh, you know, doesn't have competition until the 2030s. Now that's saying something. You have a cash flow stream that you can model out for 10, 15 years with little to no competition. You know, what is that worth? We think a lot. And then lastly, on the pipeline side, they should be getting, you know, uh, uh, material clinical catalysts over the next uh, two to six quarters that will add to sales growth going forward. So, you know, this is a consensus long, and and I think if you think about it from a four, you know, the four points of that diamond framework, I think people can understand why it is, and I, we would continue to recommend Vertex, um, you know, to our to uh, to our clients and and to folks. Okay, Hartaj, I was just looking to fact check. You're not the highest on the street, but you're close. Goldman's at 436, Truist right. is at 456. So you're you're up there. All right, another name that you like, it looks like, is Regeneron. You see a, a, a smoker's cough drug as a reason for bullishness? Yeah, you know, Regeneron is, I would say, probably if Vertex is a consensus 1A, you know, among uh, folks that we've talked to, I think Regeneron is a consensus 1B, not a second. And and the reason to think about that is that there's a slightly more, um, you know, interesting on, on Regeneron. The smoker's cough drug, I, you talked about Dupixent, that's already approved for eczema and for asthma. Um, it's growing phenomenally. They have a partnership with Sanofi that's, uh, you know, also doing, uh, you know, which, which markets the drug XUS. That drug is will end up probably being 20 billion in sales total. It's about 10 billion right now in sales and growing still very phenomenally. Uh, and I think uh, smokers or COPD, cough, uh, they already had one phase three that's successful. You know, another should read out in the first half next year. Almost nobody has it in their models, including us. You know, that could be a 15% bump, you know, just on that COPD, on, on the depicts in that drug, uh, which is pretty significant to the share price. If you think about that 20 billion, you know, total peak sales. So that, that should make a difference. But, you know, Regeneron also is, I think, Vertex in the sense that um, it doesn't have a lot of competition, probably has some competition relative to Vertex, you know, going forward. Uh, but they also have sales and earnings growth beyond, you know, what consensus is expecting on average and probably the best in peer group pipeline. I think the difference between Regeneron and Vertex is that Regeneron usually, because of their pipeline, probably takes what I call bigger hacks at the plate. You know, they're like a slugger that's hitting, trying to hit more home runs. You know, Vertex doubles, triples, get men across bad base or ladies across base. Um, I think Regeneron takes a few more hacks, you know, trying to hit those home runs, which can then lead to a little bit more volatility. So I think that's probably the difference between the two. But in terms of the overall profile, they actually line up surprisingly well, which is why they both, I think, screen very well for a lot of investors. And just finally, would you be a buyer of some of these companies that do the weight loss drugs or has that already been priced in? Because those are the, those are the winners this year. You know, we don't cover any of those companies, and I have colleagues here at Oppenheimer that do, so I'll probably leave the details to them. I, I think, you know, Caroline, the general, um, uh, you know, trend in biotech set t tends to be that when you have really big ideas and products where people expect a lot, you know, uh, you got to understand healthcare. Um, you know, is 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 regimented by the government. You know, there's private and public pairs. There's a lot of moving parts, and I don't think it's as simple as just a drug being sort of rolled out to people and then becoming huge. Uh, it could be, they could be, but I think the road between here and there is going to be very complicated and probably take longer than people expect. Okay, really appreciate your insights, Hartaj Singh of Oppenheimer. Thanks so much. Thank you, Caroline. Always a pleasure.